It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our goal. Hey! It's, our goal. hey. it's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Breaking Bread with Tom Papa. I am Tom Papa. I am at the table where I just had a great conversation with Leanne Morgan. So funny. You are going to love her. She is one of those people that uh, just came pure stand up, has gained this huge following of all of these great fans just from pure grinding it out and never giving up, and is such a true, authentic comedian. You are going to love her. So happy she was happened to be in LA, and we got to have her come and join us at the table. And uh, and I gave her what possibly is one of the best breads I've ever made. I would like to thank the good people at Trade Coffee Partners. Oh, Trade Coffee! Trade Coffee partners with the country's best craft roasters to give the freshest and best tasting coffee. You take this little survey, you tell them what you like, and then they send you Trade Coffee sends you different roasters coffee from around the country right to your doorstep. It's so perfect. You come home, I came home off the road, and there was a a bag of coffee from another little vintage small town roaster, and it shows up in my place, and you're going to love these guys. Trade customers are truly impactful for these independent roasters supporting the local economy in small towns and big cities. Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order, plus free shipping. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. This is making me want coffee right now. I just hear coffee and I get excited. Go to drinktrade.com. That's drinktrade.com slash papa and take their quiz and find the coffee that you love. And I have to say, they send some coffee and it really kind of matches to what you want. And if you don't want it, they, they, they will adjust and send you and make sure I do the pour over more about that later trade coffee thank you also like to thank the good people at policy genius policygenius.com life insurance gives you peace of mind and you can trust policy genius they don't add on extra fees or sell your info to third parties head to policygenius.com to get your free life insurance quote. They basically do all of the research for you in the life insurance realm, and then you go to this one place, and they give you an analysis of all the different policies that you can have. See how much you could save at policygenius.com. So happy this worked out. This was, I have been an admirer of Leanne's for quite some time. She is so funny. She just has this great, like I said before, like this very honest, truthful place from where her comedy comes from. She talks a lot about family. She's got a great, great voice. And uh, it, we've been, you know, kind of going back and forth on social media. And it just so happened that my free day where I can hustle over here to the studio, she happens to be in uh, going and doing a thing on uh, Kelly Clarkson and doing some stand up around town. And it just worked out perfectly. Also worked out perfectly with my bread schedule where I had baked a bread for her and then I saw a window, a little opening, and I was like, wouldn't this be better if I can actually bring a bread to her that is actually right out of the oven? Because of course then you get the smell and you get the and I use this bread flour from Central Milling where I get all my flour from and I am so excited because there's another loaf at home waiting for me. I think what I gave her might be one of the best breads I've made. (laughs) And I have to say, I know it's corny, but when you know that you want it to come out right and you're making it for someone who you have on your mind, this individual, and you want to make sure that, uh, it's going, that they're going to love it every little aspect of how you're doing it, everything that you, you know, you have this when you make meals and you know that you want it to be right and you just have them on your mind. It's more uh, magical than when you're just baking bread for nobody, just doing it just to do it. 
I mean, you, you, of course, you can accomplish things that way. But when you have someone in mind, as I did with Leanne, uh, it all just worked out, I think. It looks beautiful. We'll see when she gets to her hotel room. She says she loves bread, and she doesn't seem like the kind of person that uh, is going to be dishonest or even need a knife to get into this bread. <laughs> I think she's going to uh, uh, be a very... <laughs> I think she's going to be happy in the hotel room. All right, so we had this great conversation. You're going to love it. Um, we, it's a big, healthy portion of Leanne Morgan. So let's get right to it. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you for being here. I can't believe this worked out. Oh, no, and I'm so tickled. Thank you for having me. What a dream. This what is a- so perfect. You're, in the, you're touring all over the place. You're doing gigantic things. How great that you just happened to roll through. I'm literally the one day that I even had to come to meet at the studio. I know. I know. If if you were Jewish, I would call it kismet. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. What do you call um, a lucky happenstance in the South? Uh, it was meant to be. Meant I mean, it was meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I baked you bread. I was going to... Um, Thank you. I'm a bread person. You are? Oh, I am. Oh, that's good. And I'm a sourdough person. Oh my God! Well, this is this is really special because I made one the day before, and it gets better each day. Like after it bakes, it's got like two days of it still like um, the the flavors kind of deepening. Um, but then today, with this bread flour, I made this one, and it was so perfect. That I was like, I'm, I decided to jump the other one that I was going to, going to give you. <gasps> And just feel it because it's warm because I just came out of the oven. What a beauty. See how much I love you? Right, Gosh, Tom. Thank you, honey. This might be one of the best things that's ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> now I was worried because I know you're on the road, but what do you do in your hotel room at your own time? Is it's none of my business. <laughs> I, will, I will get real uh, down you, and dirty with this yeah. sourdough. <laughs> Maybe you don't need enough. <laughs> um, I could pinch it like uh, when you take communion. You know, my um, my son is 28 years old, and mm-hmm. he baked a lot of bread during the COVID. He did. Uh-huh, and he loves to um, cook and bake. Oh, and then my, nice. my baby child uh, is 24, and she loves to bake. Oh. They will be on fire. Oh, that's great. Oh, they've got yeast packets and all that. You oh, know, that's good. I've never baked bread. Really? And I'm from a, you know, my people are farming people and we, you know, kill our own meat. Right. And uh, make sausage and hogs. And yeah, oh, we have nice. a thing called hog killing. Hog um, killing? Yeah, hog killing. We don't, I didn't ever kill a hog. Uh-huh. But we make the sausage out of it. My mom and dad had a meat processing plant, and that's how they put my sister and I through college. But wow, where was this? In Adams, Tennessee, outside of Nashville. Right. On the Kentucky Tennessee border. Okay. Um, like 35 minutes from Nashville. Right. So it very rural, but yet we had Nashville. So right. I would, I would go to, buy underwear and there would be the Mandrell sisters you know I, you, so I saw country music people right like you go to Sherwin Williams and see Johnny Cash and June in a mink coat no with cans of paint no yeah because they were just they were stars but they were normal people that did their own painting I oh, guess that's amazing but anyway my people I, my mama's always cooked I've always cooked I've right. you know, raised three children but I've never baked like my mom can make biscuits my little mother-in-law Ooh. Gail oh her biscuits make you fight yeah and then but i've never i think it takes a scientist are you like smart in science i am not (laughs) see (laughs) there's i thought the same thing but bread is kind of a middle ground between cooking and baking the pastry scientific way there's this there's forgiveness in bread you can be a little sloppier you can be a little inaccurate there's definitely more than in cooking where you just throw in handfuls of whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I am not. So that let that serve as inspiration <laughs> because if I could do it, um, most people can. And you don't use a bread machine. Oh You're my. not one of those people. I'm. Uh, I'm. I, I might end this interview right now. <laughs> 
because that is that's like a that's yeah that's people that don't know what they're doing that's yeah so you actually do this let things rise let things rise you got a starter do you have a sourdough I have two starter? sourdough starters and so i came off the road and then started baking bread and then i knew from the time we booked today is wednesday so on monday i got the starter going and then last night um mixed all of the flour and the water together and folded it and stuff before i went to bed and then let it ferment overnight and that the the, the flavor really starts to get in so then when i wake up in the morning what was a little bit in the bucket is now coming over the top of the bucket and then pour it out and size it up and shape it put it in the fridge for a couple hours and then baked it and here we are oh that looks like a bakery you've got that crust on it that good brown mm-hmm yeah and I'm I, trying to go a little go... darker with it Are lately you? yeah yeah I think the, the flavors are deeper right Oh, they don't. <laughs> but do these people out in Los Angeles eat bread? Well, that's, um, you know what I found? Because I, you know what they don't have out here? I was raised in New Jersey and all Italians, stuff all around us and all that thing. And a cannoli. Have you ever had a cannoli? Yes. Okay. Now the cannolis in New York and New Jersey and Philadelphia are just amazing they're special out here there's no good cannoli they taste like wonton and shells no one has i haven't found one place and there's good italian places not one that has replicated it and i said to my wife that sh that would be the key if we could get the cannoli place and she's like people out here aren't going to eat it the people out here don't eat bread and cannolis but i think they're closet eaters i think they do show up and they do eat this stuff and then the rest, then they hike all over the place. Yeah. yeah. And maybe count macros. Right. You know, that's the new buzzword. Macros. That you can, you can get in um, a carb, uh -huh. but you got to watch everything else. And, and that takes science too. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, no. There's apps for that. My daughter's dating a guy that uh -huh. he counts his macros. So Really? I don't even know what those are. I know. I'm but it makes your it. body change and people look, um, you yeah. know, tiny in their pants. Right. I, and I say that on the on the day that I had to, t I had just filmed you know, an hour. Mm -hmm. We were talking about, you know, having a new hour and everything is, what have you done for me lately now? Yeah. In comedy. But, um, and I had to watch myself on stage from the side. <laughs> and I bought a really nice dress that is, I'm beautiful in it in person. <laughs> and on stage, from the side, it was like, well, first of all, these, I tied the bow um, up under my breasts. And these breasts, Tom, I'm on this, okay. I had three babies and I nursed them. So I'm 56 years old. So when I quit nursing my last baby, and she's 24, um, she was 18 months old. And so after you nurse three babies, I mean, it ruined my breast. Right. And I was still young and had life left in me. And, <laughs> and so back then, everybody was getting the Pamela Lee Anderson implants. Yeah. And I don't talk about this a lot because I don't talk about it on stage, even though now I'm an old woman. Now, when I was starting <laughs> comedy in my late 30s, if I talked about my breast implants, I just felt like it was a distraction. Right. So now, I mean, I'm old and it, I'm, I mean, I'm not old, but not I, old. I'm not out catting around. So right. nobody's going to be threatened by me. But um, but these old implants have now expired. I got these big Pamela <laughs> Lee Anderson horrible. So now, you, they if, can go bad? They can start to... Well, I mean, I think they can leak and do crazy mess. Mine has ne mine are still in good shape and all that. And uh -huh. my husband's very tight with money and <laughs> has said, nothing's wrong with those. You don't, need, you don't need to do a thing. They're fine. But I'm like, there's a serial number on them. <laughs> and it's there's an expiration date. <laughs> right. And I just think, at this point in my life, I've had a good run. You know. <laughs> right. I've enjoyed them. <laughs> We've all had a good time. It's time to get them out. And I see that my picture my video uh -huh. and my fanny my butt i feel like it looks like you know those old women that work in the hospital and walk around you can hear their thighs rubbing together and polyester it's like you could put a cafeteria tray on my fanny and then there's these huge watermelon breast 
And I just think, who, who is saying it? That's not me. <laughs> and so then I'll go on a thing where I'm like, I'm not going to eat any bread. Yeah, no And more. I'm not going to, and I'm just going to eat spinach and chicken. And But you know, I can't, Tom. I can't either. I just can't. I can't. Every day I wake up and I'm, I think, I feel fat and I think... <laughs> Should I just, I should, my, I have a 16 year old who's going through her vegan phase and I'm like, maybe I should just do what she's doing and just go vegan. And then I go upstairs and as I'm thinking about it, I'm literally putting butter on a piece of toast and eating it. I'm like, well, I blew it again today. This yeah. is butter's not vegan. And then I just can't do it. I can't, there's a limit to, to how much benefit we're going to get if we did everything right if we did the macros did the vegan worked out did all this stuff how good is it gonna be you got one <laughs> life to live yeah you got and you're funny and so i know all of your life you've been a joy and so you probably find you know happiness in a lot of simple things right. i do too yeah. i like when my kids come home I, it's just like mm -hmm. a big party and right. I want us to eat, but I'm from yes. the country. We, I feed. I want to feed, and and I'm sure that's something like Italian people. Yes, it's very. It is very similar. It is. It, now, are you the host when, like, when you come? The, you're the one at the helm. I love to have. I love right. to have my kids come home and people over. Right. And I like to cook and and for everybody to have a good time and be together. Yeah. I love all that. What's your main thing that you cook if you've got all the kids are home? Um, they do love my chicken piccata. Uh-huh. And I'll tell you where I got that recipe, because I didn't grow up fixing chicken piccata. Right. That was from Tr Trisha Yearwood's uh -huh. first cookbook mm -hmm. after she started dating Garth Brooks. Oh. Which I don't know what all that was about. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to judge, but, you know, something went on there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she's got an unbelievable cookbook. And I think they've been very happy together. I shouldn't have said that, but I don't know. You know, he was married to Sandy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what do I know? <laughs> I don't know them. Okay, so she had a cookbook yeah. that came out, and it's one of the best cookbooks. Really? And it is simple. Like, I'm very, I'm, mm -hmm. I can't do a bunch of crazy mess that I've never heard of. Yeah. I like simple recipes, but I started making chicken piccata, and they love it. And then I'm a big, because my people grew their own <laughs> food and you know we had beef and killed our own cows i mean again yeah. i did not kill a cow but what's the a little, a little man that had four fingers <laughs> killed him um did you have to kill anything no never no. not even a chicken no. no my little grandmama would wring a chicken's neck in front of me <laughs> and then pluck it and we'd eat it and <laughs> So I went through, when my little daddy opened up that meat processing plant, I yeah. went vegetarian from sixth grade. I didn't know what it was called. From uh, sixth grade until I went to the University of Tennessee. And then I just couldn't eat meat. Couldn't it freaked do it. me out. Right. Yeah, I saw all that. And I yeah. had to work in it, and I didn't like it. And then I went to UT, and I kind of got away from it. Uh -huh. And I started eating it again. And let me say that the Italian boys, <laughs> I'd never met an Italian boy and so when I went to UT, I made out with a lot of people from New Jersey. <laughs> oh, really? I did. I was very attracted to them. I really was. Um, I got can a think little, of a couple of names. There's something about Italian boys. They got a little something going on. They got a little something going on. Yeah. They really do. Yeah. yeah. And but, Italian boys look at, at Southern ladies the same way. Do they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we win Miss USA. Yep. You know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of pretty women in the South, and we do the sure up, you know, Tom, because yeah. I think about, all right, my husband went to school with a lot of smart people, went to a public high school mm -hmm. and took AP courses, and my husband's very smart and anal retentive, and everything has to be perfect, <laughs> and he, one of his best friends married a girl that had graduated from Princeton. No. Oh. And she was from where the Pilgrims landed. Okay, that was uh, Plymouth. <laughs> Plymouth, yeah. She was from up around there. Uh -huh. And we went to their wedding, and oh, all boy. the groomsmen had on seersucker suits, uh -huh. these southern boys. Mm -hmm. And all those women from around there, no makeup on, um, <laughs> no spray tans. We all came Sensible up from shoes. <laughs> a nice wedge. 
we all came in there like a bunch of, I don't know what you do, big hats, lipstick, eyelashes on. And I realized, I go, we are very different from the girls up north. And then I remember the girls from Princeton talking about their thesis. And I had had my second baby, was pregnant with my third one. I didn't know it. And I was retaining fluid and, and took a big bag of feminine protection because I thought, oh, I'm not going to have to have sex because I'm gonna, I'm, it's about to start. And then um, <laughs> found out I was pregnant with my third baby oh. up there. Uh-huh. And That's just fall asleep out. in the car uh-huh. oh. and thought, I wonder why this is. Anyway, um, <laughs> they were all talking about thesis and I was thinking, Barney, you know, I was listening Rainy to, Cheerios. I was watching Barney <laughs> and yeah, and Pop-Tarts in a couch smush. Yeah. So you've got, <laughs> my, see, mine are grown. I've got a grandbaby, Tom. Yeah, I know. I was, I was wanted to ask you about that because <sighs> you, your stuff is so funny, and the Thank there's you. a there's been people on on YouTube. You got huge numbers off of Facebook and YouTube, and just people, which is such a testament to how funny you are, because a lot of times a platform will get a lot of eyes on something that maybe isn't that great but stuff that's great the eyeballs will find it and that's what's ha happened to you and it's great to see uh, thank you and, and it really resonates because you are a little ahead of me and when you talk about how mean your kids your daughter was and all that kind of stuff and that's what I'm currently going through so I'm really looking forward to seeing what's up ahead. Because <laughs> your and babies are how old? I've got 16 and 19, about to be 17 and 20. Like girls, both month. girls? Both girls. And your run on the mean teenager coming down the stairs and being so scared and how they're nice to everyone in the world and they get into your minivan, all that stuff is so accurate and so deadly, deadly true. And here's something, oh, this is what I want to share with you. So I'm on tour now and I'm telling these jokes about what I'm going through with my daughters through the pandemic. And I literally talk about how my one daughter, and this all happened, my one daughter came in and said she could hear me breathing from the other room when I'm, she's trying to watch a movie. Yeah. And the other one said that she, can, she doesn't like the way I chew my granola. It's exactly your, your life, it's exactly your bit. <laughs> you have the same thing. I you, know, you're and that's true. I know, I know it's true. I know it's true because every single other thing that you talk about with your daughter, I'm like, this is when people come up to us after, and we're very similar talking about family and stuff, and they come up I'm like, you must be in my living room. Do you, are you married to my husband? Are right, you, right, right. And I'm geeking out now in the same way, because I'm like, you're living, I'm living your life. <laughs> and, and, and I bet people relate to, you know, what you're saying, and I mm -hmm. think people want to relate to something. And when I first got started in comedy, I mean, I've done, this is 22 years yeah. that I've been doing it, and yeah. I know that people think, Oh, this just happened for her and she's like one of these youtubers that <laughs> just put out this stuff but i mean this is a long time coming yeah and i remember people telling me years ago oh there's gonna be you know people are gonna buy tickets to shows that they've seen something on facebook and i'm like what that sounds like voodoo <laughs> and i fought that stuff for a long time social media and i was like uh -huh. i don't need that and you know things were just i was you know in knoxville tennessee yeah barely doing you know comp, doing whatever i could get you know yeah. horrible gigs yeah um and then going out on the road some in comedy clubs but comedy cl cl clubs didn't book me as much um because mm -hmm. you got to come up through those you know yeah and i wasn't in la or new york and um my husband's you know got a job and had health insurance so we stayed in knoxville i begged him to come to la when they were little i said chuck please let's move and i'll cook on a hot plate <laughs> And I know I can make it. And he was yeah. like, what are you, crazy? I mean, he's a very practical person. Right. Anyway, and I'm a dreamer. But, um, but you knew it. You had a feeling. I that, knew it. Yeah. I just knew it. But anyway, here it, it's better, you know, it, it's happened now. Mm -hmm. My children don't need me. They're grown. Right. And because um, I, you know, was the one that took care of them because their daddy was always traveling with his job. But yes, that all, I started talking about birthing and being pregnant. That was a that was a very prolific time for me. Yeah. Then it went through 
uh, elementary school and, you know, somebody do doing on a T-ball field. Right. <laughs> um, and then it, that was a good time. And then middle school, they were like, do not speak my name. Do not. It's like Will Smith, you know, get your name up <laughs> now. And then um, that was a very dry time. And then high school, they were like, we don't care what you do. And they they didn't. They were like, You're, we're never going to see you again. What difference does it make? <laughs> and now people say to me all the time, do they care what you talk about? And they go, I go, no. And they're like, mom, do whatever you want to. But that middle child, when that bit came out and I talked about how hateful she was. Right. People were like, you shouldn't be making a, a fun of a child that has misphonia, which is like a like like you can't take sound and uh, i'm like she doesn't have misphonia <laughs> she's just a real butthole yeah she's just mean <laughs> just mean <laughs> but let me give you this hope okay if you've got one going through that yeah they will grow out of that now it takes a long time yeah but they will come back around and they'll end up your very best friend yeah and you tell your wife that, that okay y'all, she needs gonna... to hear it more than i do because she, she gets more of it She's, yeah, a mama does. Yeah, yeah. There's a different dynamic there. Yeah. And I see the I see the skies clear at some points. <laughs> like I see it like, oh, there she is. And then you think it's cool, and then and see then them she at goes, breakfast. <laughs> yeah, like that? Like, oh no. Right? Uh huh. <laughs> and you know, mine still can yeah. do that. My girls can yeah. still do me that way, but it's mm-hmm. when they're hormonal, and they right. don't mean to. And I and they and I just don't answer the phone when I know that they're. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be a butthole but they are the ones that check on me i've heard uh-huh. from both of them three times today right and they girls t- tend to you talk. yeah so my boy is precious and i'm in love with him but he's got his own wife and baby and so right. he calls me but not like my girls girls tend to their mom and dad and and that's what his girl's doing well with her fam with her people yeah her people he cl- he doesn't cling to her people, mm-hmm. but I have to share with her people with her people. Right. But they're darling. But uh-huh. see, now I've got this grandbaby, and they're overwhelmed, and they both work full time. And my daughter in law is in MBA school at night and on the weekends. Oh boy! And so they need us. They're so near I you? get my uh, they're twenty minutes, so I get that baby all the time. Oh, that's good. Oh, and and just wait till you have. And I know you're a long way away from that, Tom. But but it is so wonderful really and people would say that to me they uh-huh. go it's the best thing that ever happened to you <laughs> and i would and and i received that i felt like i received it <laughs> but you don't know until it gets here why like why is i would do i i got in an uber uh-huh. uh about a month ago with a man and i'm where was i it's one of my shows on my tour and he said we we're talking about having grandbabies and he said this sounds terrible but if my grandson <laughs> came to me and asked me to hide a body I think I'd help him. And I go, I get it. <laughs> There's something about a grandbaby. I just want him to have, like, I'm always looking for water toys now, a wheelbarrow. He's going to be 17 months old and he likes to mow. He likes to be out in the yard. And so I'm just thinking, what? Oh, mo- books about mowing, books about grass, books about frogs. I, I mean, I, and he is just so <laughs> yummy. And I don't want him to suffer. Like if I think yeah. I think I made a lot of mistakes, probably raising children. I'm not, I, and I think I did some good things because mm-hmm. I've got three precious children. Yes, and they're very they are very compassionate people, and they've they're successful in life and all that. Mm-hmm. But I and I don't think that I I don't think I helicoptered them. Right. I really I knew that wasn't the right thing to do. Yeah. So I never like if they if they, something went wrong at school or whatever I didn't jump in and try to fix it. Right. Right. This baby though, <laughs> if I just can't, if he goes, oh, I'm like, what does he want? <laughs> I cannot take it. And I think that's being a grandma and a granddaddy. My husband yeah. can't either. Oh, I, I, my husband's crazy about this. Moment. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I was thinking this way because I don't know it, but I can play act it. That when my daughter was, you know, she's going through that teen thing. And I was like, and she's got, you know, she's doing her stuff and all. And I, and I was like, maybe she just needs more love. Maybe she just needs more attention. Get off her back. Just be there to be. And I was like, what if I raised my daughter like a granddaughter what if i just treat her the way that a grandparent would like just but it and i kind of moved that way a little bit but you have to ultimately discipline at some point oh yeah they can't 
just live with their grandparents. I know, because like then if you everybody were just, would be, right, yeah. woo, television in the room. and <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But there is something to be said. Like, that little guy, whatever his name is. Charles Wilbur. Charles, oh, what a great name. Thank you. Charles oh, Wilbur. Boy. Ryan Hamilton said to me, strong name, Leanne. I was like, <laughs> thank you, Ryan. Yeah. It was, it's from two great granddaddies. Oh, yeah. Charles Wilbur. And we call him Charles Wilbur. That is such a Sometimes great... Sometimes C.W. Yeah. But my my boy's an old soul, the one that bakes. Uh-huh. Charlie. Right. He's like an 80-year-old man, has a garden, and loves all that kind of stuff, fly fishes. Yeah. Um, was he always that way? Yeah. He was? He, he came out of my womb, an old soul, an 80-year-old man. And from the time he was three, I, there's the things he was interested in. Yeah. And he loves to read and loves to learn. But, um, but yeah, like, my people grew dark fire tobacco. That, where I'm from in, the, in Tennessee, they're uh-huh. known for that. Right. That makes um, dip, skull, and Copenhagen. What's it called? Dark what? dark fired tobacco dark fired it's a certain kind of tobacco right so i smoked in the 80s tom and i'm so ashamed yeah i did did you look cool i did (laughs) and i probably could have dated a lot of cuter men you know if i didn't smell bad (laughs) but i just i waited tables and you know i'm saying so funny in my hour i mean i made terrible decisions in the 80s i was wrecked (laughs) you were i was yeah but anyway, we'll talk about that some other time. Were you but married in the 80s? I, I got married, and this is the first time I've ever talked about this. Okay, right. Tom, no, Papa no, you're C, not yet. because right. you are, there's something about you. I feel like we've been friends for 100 years. I do, too. You angel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got married at 21 to a very charismatic, um, beautiful guy that was older than me, and uh-huh. I was lost, and I was an idiot. And I was just in not in a good place, uh-huh. and I was at the University of Tennessee, and I and he talked me into dropping out, Whoa. and I and I didn't have any kind of direction because yeah. the time when I was five, I wanted to be in show business, uh-huh. but but being in the country and coming up through all that, I was like, how's that going to happen? You know, that's crazy. But yeah. it was always in my mind, like I'm gonna, I love comedy and I wanted to do, but I just didn't know I would have never gone out to LA at 18 right. I could have never right so um so I was just lost and not and didn't know what I was going to do and didn't have a really a, a focus on a major or anything and hadn't done well in school right and I it was just right for somebody to come in and he was um um I say looking back mentally ill and at the time oh, you know yeah. back then we didn't know what you just think, oh, they're mean as a snake. But anyway, got a divorce. I was divorced at 23. Whoa. Wait, which was made he... me think of something like Happy Days. Like, you know, when a divorcee would come on Happy Days. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I felt like. At 23. At was 23. He, was he the bad guy? Was the, the bad boy kind of type? Was um, he... he was. Um, no, what? I wouldn't say that. What? He was a frat guy in college. When uh-huh. he was older, he was already out. And, uh-huh. But he was beautiful and he was um he just i, I he just swept me off my feet right, and right. and then it was abusive and it was all these things that were terrible and then so i got out of it in two years in about two and a half years and then he went on to i don't know if i should tell this but brilliant but he went on to um launch amazon.com <laughs> I know. Now, when I was with him, what he he was very up and down, very emotional and up and down. I I wonder if that now would be called bipolar. Right. But then he went back to school after we divorced and said, "I'm." I saw him out somewhere, and he said, "I'm getting a master's in what they call this thing called the internet or the interweb or something." I remember thinking, "They do." Anyway. He is not. He was known. He's no longer with us. Um, he has passed away. But he was known as the godfather of SEO link building. So if you're, you know, when when they're marketing, internet right. marketing, and they they do names like under your YouTube channel, uh-huh. like Tom Pop and Sourdough and right. comedy and all this SEO that links you to so the other people see your videos right, or whatever. Right. He was known. He like started that. Whoa. So you're going through your life and you have people in your life that are dependent on you, working hard, 
bringing in money, creating a life for them. Uh, there is always that little thing in the back of your head to make, where you want to make sure if something, God forbid, were to happen, they would be taken care of. Life insurance does that. It calms you down. It's nice to know that you've done the responsible thing and did the research and took care of these people so you don't have to worry. That You just feel like, okay, like I said, God forbid, but... Life insurance is a grown-up thing that you should do, but it's a big minefield, and you don't know how to do it and who to trust. Uh, there are some of these big-ticket items where you just need some help. The people at Policy Genius are your friends. They will click on the link in the description or head to policygenius.com. You answer a few questions, and in minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. It's a nice service. It's a nice service when they can, you know that you have somebody that has your back. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. The team of licensed experts at Policy Genius are on hand through the entire process to help you understand your options and make the decisions with confidence. The team works for you not the insurance companies. So whether you're just starting to shop or have questions about your active policy, they're your independent advocates offering unbiased advice. Head to policygenius.com, get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. They don't add extra fees. They don't sell your info to third parties. They have thousands of five-star reviews across Google and Trustpilot. Head to policygenius.com, get your free life insurance quotes, and see how much you could save and how good you'll feel about yourself when you take care of this task for the people that you care about. Also, like to thank the good people at Trade Coffee. Okay, so I took this little quiz. You know I love coffee. I love it. It is right now as I'm recording this. A little too late to to uh, be drinking coffee because I probably will be up late at night. But I do have a show at the comedy store tonight. This is my rationalization. I love coffee. I do the pour over method, which means I t get whole coffee beans and I grind them down and I put them in my little pour over cup, pour the hot water over it and get a single cup of great coffee. And I'm always sniffing around. I'm always searching for the best bags. And I know the ones in the supermarket that are too greasy. I know the ones that are too oily. I know the ones that just bloom when the water hits it. And it just gives you this beautiful aromatic smell. And you know that that's going to be a great cup of coffee. And I have to say, the more educated I am on coffee, the, uh, the less of it I drink, where I would drink like six cups just trying to pound it of this bad coffee. And now it's like each one is just golden and I will just have like two in the morning and spend the time with it. And it makes the day so much better. Uh, I, I, I can't say enough about finding the right coffee. And this is where Trade Coffee comes in. They connect customers to the freshest and best tasting coffee they've ever made at home by partnering with the country's best handcraft roasters. Not handcraft, just craft roasters. There are independent businesses from big cities and small towns. I got some from San Diego. I got some from up in Portland. And this is a great way to give these small roasters, like I had this small roaster in Chicago that I like. They don't have a national presence, but people like Trade Coffee actually test all the thousands of coffees, keep 450 different kinds live and ready to ship every day. There's no one perfect coffee, but there is perfect coffee for you. Trade's first match guarantee Trade is so confident that they'll match you right for the first time, this is what I was talking about before, that if they don't, they'll take your feedback and an actual coffee expert will work with you to send a brand new bag to you for free. It's a great service. Like I said, I got off the road and uh, there was that little bag there waiting for me and I know this is gonna be coffee that I don't even know about from some part of the country I haven't even visited. But Trade Coffee did the work for me based on the stuff the uh, analysis that I gave them in the quiz. So right now, 
Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com slash papa. Let them know that we sent you. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash papa and let trade find you a coffee you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash papa, P-A-P-A, for $30 off. Oh, I know I'm going to drink more coffee when I get home. Uh, it had a beautiful family, beautiful wife, and three little children. Jeez, and, so um, you like got normal after? I don't think so. Not normal. But um, he made his. Yeah, he yeah. made a lot of money. Uh huh. And um, but he uh, took his own life, and so Jeez. yeah, so he so. So I here I am, you know, you know this yeah. girl from Adams, Tennessee, Mary, then feel like this huge failure, right? Because I had to get out of it. I yeah. had to. It's great you were you did, and then went back to school. Met my husband now, Chuck. Right. Had a bunch of kids by Chuck. All right, let me tell you that Chuck <laughs> moved to the foothills of the Appalachia Mountains. Whoa. And was, because he is from Morristown, Tennessee, which is um, up in East Tennessee, but very affluent area right. with a country club. Like, my mm-hmm. people, I didn't know that people played tennis and golf. I thought right. that was like something the queen did. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have that around where I was from. So he had all that. Jeez. And, um, and was raised playing golf and doing all that. And was very smart in school. And he was getting an MBA. We met. And then... Um, the whole time I'm thinking, I, I can't get in with you because I'm going to Hollywood. Uh-huh. Then we married, I, and he bought a used mobile home business in Bean Station, Tennessee, that is in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. He'd never set foot in a trailer. <laughs> he had been to play golf with a little crusty man named, what was that little man's <laughs> name? Fran. And Fran and his little and Chuck's dad and uh-huh. they were playing golf and Fran said I've had this business and it's been very lucrative and but I'm gonna get, I'm gonna retire and get out and so Chuck bought it wow. and it never stepped in a mobile home so we um, had this business and we were young like 26 and 27 right and I'm a little bit older than him and which I say that Tom and I bet people that listen to your podcast go in the South so she's already been married twice and she's only. <laughs> Seven. We marry young. It's we on do. brand. It's on yeah, brand. We do. <laughs> yeah. I've all my life it was but, like get find you a man, put on a push up bra, right. and let's go. So, you know. So when you have you have that in your head, but you also have I'm going to be a star in my head, and you haven't done anything at this point to no. become a star, but you're still no. it's very much in your head that I'm going to be a big comedian one day yes and my husband all right so chuck and i went on vacation <laughs> out here to see my sister she was working for a company in huntington beach uh-huh. so we came out here to see her i went to the comedy store mm-hmm. and um paul mooney closed the show that night right dom herrera was on yeah i'm a huge fan of dom oh, herrera yeah. we all and are. um but and i think i look at that lineup and i was so i remember being so nervous yeah. and sitting watching them and the whole time, I'm sure Chuck just sat and enjoyed it and watched them. <laughs> the whole time I sat and thought, okay, I need to be doing this. This is okay. I can do it. I know right. I can do it. Like that, I yeah, felt yeah. that way the whole time. And um, but wreck. yeah, I just didn't know. <laughs> I just didn't know how. Or and and I thought, well, yeah. am I crazy? Am I like the people on American Idol that think they can sing? <laughs> right. Like I didn't. I thought, am I crazy? I don't need to. You know. So yeah. I was just fighting in my own head yeah. this whole time. And then, um, I you know I ended up I finished my degree at the University of Tennessee. And but I I had my first baby and I wanted to stay home with him and nurse. Right. And be and I always wanted to be a stay home mom. Yeah. And um, I started selling jewelry. Uh-huh. like Tupperware. Uh-huh. My friend in Nashville said there's this jewelry company and you can make <laughs> extra money and you can meet people. Mm-hmm. So I started selling jewelry. I don't even care about jewelry. Right. <laughs> and we all look like Mr. T. Like they'd say, go to the grocery <laughs> store and wear all this jewelry. It was one of those multi-level marketing things. <laughs> You're walking around town with all this I'm jewelry. I'm walking on. around a tiny town. Yeah, with a lot of <laughs> chains on and big earrings. And um, but they were darling people, and yeah. um, and I started selling jewelry to everybody in East Tennessee. And what it was is I I kind of developed a shtick, and uh-huh. I would talk about breastfeeding and hemorrhoids and 
and how I wanted to kill Chuck because he didn't hear the baby cry in the night. Uh-huh. And women thought I was funny, and so they started booking me like a year in advance. And I remember saying, it's either now, book a party with me now, or see me in Las Vegas later. And I remember thinking, that was stupid. I don't know why I said that. Anyway. <laughs> it was booking parties? Like I was book booking you? parties, and they would book me, and they were booking me way far out because women would say, she's fun. You can have a party, put some dip out. Buy a $20 pair of earrings, and she's pretty funny. Wait. So then one night, somebody, I was doing my thing, and somebody peed on a couch. Tom. <laughs> and I saw her recently, 20-something years later, yeah. and she works at my eye doctor. <laughs> and she went, oh, my gosh, Lynn. I went, Carmen. And, she, and I said, you, when you peed on that couch, Carmen, it was like a God thing. Like I knew it was like one of those moments where yeah. I thought, okay, I've got it. I could do this. Well, the company <laughs> noticed and started asking me to speak at their big things. Whoa. And I was supposed to be talking about, I was supposed to have a speech prepared and talk about how I could get booked, but yeah. I didn't. I talked about breastfeeding and hemorrhoids. <laughs> and women would say, that was the first time I was in front of a big audience where they would say, um, you need to be a stand up. I mean, why aren't you doing right. stand up? And that, so then, um, you know, I just did Jeez. stuff around Morristown, Tennessee, and just anything I could get. And That's it was amazing. weird stuff. It was stuff like a little 80 year old woman that went to my Methodist church. She said, Lynn, would you come and do your little thing? Everybody <laughs> is always says to me, Can you do your little thing? Yeah. Can you put on a program <laughs> at the, caf- the um, volunteers at the hospital and we'll pay you with cafeteria food? And I was like, <laughs> Yes. And uh-huh. um, so I did that kind of stuff for a long time. And then my. What's a long time? Um, probably two years or something like that, two uh-huh. or three years. And then I went to, I talked Brian Dorfman at Zanies in Nashville and let me open. Uh huh. And um, I opened for Billy Gardell. Ah. And, and I don't, I'm sure I sucked. And uh, <laughs> I went back in his office and Brian said, I think you got something. He said, But how are you going to do this with three babies? He said, Um, you know, Roseanne did it and raised them in a station wagon in a parking lot, and it's not good. Yeah. So I just thought, okay, I'll have to figure it, because I wanted to do clubs, but I thought right. I'll just have to figure out another way. Anyway, Chuck sold that business and went to work for a large company that sent us to San Antonio, Texas. So I had the River Club. Did you ever work the River Club? No. <laughs> you know, a club in a mall. Right. It's not always the best fun yeah. thing, <laughs> yeah. but it was a lot of the young people would come in. They let me get up at at night, uh-huh. late night, and it, everybody was high on marijuana. And I was talking about <laughs> doing balls on a t ball field, but I had I was different than everybody. You know, there's right. not there's not a lot of young moms doing comedy. You know, yeah. really. Didn't you find Didn't you find that that was actually good like because i talk a lot about family and i was going through the same stuff and you know you're talking about your life it's all autobiographical so you're going through this stuff that they're not going through a younger audience isn't but i always felt like if this stuff still works in front of the laugh factory audience on friday at midnight yeah and they're identifying from whatever angle they're experiencing something about a family they're seeing their parents or their brothers or sisters or their, or, yeah, yeah. that it, if it worked there then I it was good to good to go yes right like it yes. was a good test it really is when everybody's high and drunk on marijuana yeah in the middle in midnight right exactly because there's some people comedians that touch on this stuff in a way that doesn't appeal to everybody that it is it it's only for an older crowd yeah you know what I mean yeah yeah and, and then you got young comics talking about you know getting high and, and watching porn and right. all that and yeah. they've got their thing yeah but um i know that one of my television deals i've had about you know for sitcoms and stuff that haven't made it and um but they sent my reel back then and they i uh, think to spike tv or something and they said these it was young people but they but they liked you Lynn, because they're, they were in the minivan with their sister when she, you know, hit hit their mom in the back of the head with a backpack, you know, right. or came out and whatever. Yeah. It said, don't you have a piece of cheese in this car? So I, right. you're right. I think that it's, yeah. when you talk about everybody's been through all that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. They've all, they've been in some angle. If you're just in a family, you know what's going on. Yeah. You know how this is, how it's going to play out. Yeah. And I think people 
out here at first producers and stuff were like oh she's a southern comedian like blue collar had uh-huh. boomed and they were like oh well she's a southern comic and mm-hmm. then but then i would do showcases and stuff and they would say you know i mean um all kinds of women go through what you're you're you talk about universal things right. you just happen to have a thick accent right <laughs> but i don't talk about actually being from the yeah. south right i talk about feeling fat in my pants <laughs> going to weight watchers i'm in menopause i have to prostitute myself to chuck you know for my kids to have nice things tom <laughs> and it's just things that i think most you know women go through yeah right exactly and i'm so lucky that yeah. i even i mean I, I remember seeing you were with Jerry Seinfeld uh-huh. in San Antonio at the Ma- Majestic, uh-huh. right? Yeah, years ago. Or was I? I know I wasn't high on marijuana because I didn't do it. <laughs> but I remember getting Chuck tickets for his birthday, right? And um, and I remember oh loving you, but I knew. I mean, I've always loved you. And then Jerry Seinfeld came out, and I thought, oh, I can if I could just, he can talk about a cotton ball. Right. <laughs> and I thought, I've always admired that, but I just don't think that way. I've yeah. got to talk about something that happened. And- right. Right, exactly. I know. That is the thing. There's definitely people you admire, and you see them, and you're like, what? they're doing so well. And it's like, wow, but I couldn't, I, I could write all of the edgy uh whatever the hot topic is race transgender whatever stuff and go up on stage and the audience audience will be like what are you doing <laughs> what are you what are you doing I know. <laughs> you and are I, what you are yeah. i actually had this interesting conversation with jimmy carr um over the weekend and he had a great way to express it that that your being is your being and when you're up on stage they know exactly who you are before you even say anything and he described it as comedians leak we leak we all of our essence just pours out of us so before you even say anything they're like oh i know exactly who she is and what she's about (laughs) so yeah you just got to keep true to that yeah yeah and and see i think um brian dorfman said this to me he said there's so many funny people but you got to be unique mm-hmm. to stand out to get, um, you know, to blow up or to yeah. whatever. And and to me, see, I could be in um, New York, in a <laughs> in a million people, and I could pick you out in a second. I mean, right. you're very unique, uh-huh. and I've always that you've always been. And I know they've told you that, but um, you're there's something about you. You just you stand out. Yeah, it's just I. Th- think it's authenticity i think that's what it is like you're not faking it when you're on stage you're not pretending to be and it's it really it just you can feel it that's the thing is when you watch it, it's like you're not just hearing funny jokes you're actually feeling it <laughs> and relating it to you <laughs> to your life oh so when your daughter was mean mm-hmm. <laughs> back to my therapy session yes when your daughter was mean um the thing that surprises me is like, you're like, okay, she's just going through that. That's typical, happens to everybody. But it surprises me how she can, you're like expecting it, you're expecting a mood, whatever, and they can just do something that hurts your feelings. Oh. And it just kind of, it just, it's just reaction, right? Out of you. There's no, I'm trying to be cool with it. And then if you do something, you're like, oh. <laughs> It hurts so b- worse than anything. Turn on you on a dime. Right. <laughs> and hurt with words. Yes. You know, horrible things. I know. I know. So when you were going through that, what was your strategy? What would you, how would you, just in the day to day? She says that it was very few times, because I'm pretty laid back. Their daddy's not. Right. He's um, type A, anal retentive. <laughs> emotional <laughs> even though he's introverted mm. he um reacts yeah and i'm i'm more like i'm laid back and i can yeah i feel like i'm pretty good around kids i got my degree in child family studies uh-huh. i feel like i'm uh am, i've got a higher intellectual i mean uh what is it emotional iq right my husband's very 
bright mm-hmm. and smart in books and all that, <laughs> and but not at home. Doesn't understand his feelings. <laughs> uh-uh. And doesn't understand these children. Doesn't understand when little girls are, you know, uh, going through middle school and high school. And imagine what kids are going through now. I can't imagine what yours are going through because mine yeah. are now 24 and 26. So mine didn't even have an iPhone till probably ninth grade, yeah. tenth grade. Yeah. And so they didn't have the Instagram and all this uh-huh. horror. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I don't know how y'all are dealing with that. But, but even yeah. mine at the time, everything's just so heightened. And so they're just so freaked out that I feel like I'm a, I calm down and I don't right. let things escalate. Right. Now, everyone, I, so I think I'm a calming and I just be like, okay, and let things roll off my back. Right, right. And learn how to fight, what battles to fight. Tom. Right. Don't don't take everything they serve uh-uh. up. They don't that's even what know they what want. they're saying. They just want a reaction. Yeah. Don't, you can't swat everything. And their emotions and their hormones are like this. <laughs> right. All right. So I had a podcast called Sweat and Piss, Menopause and More. <laughs> With my nurse practitioner, who is brilliant, hormone guru, and she <laughs> said on an episode that middle school and high school girls' hormones are like this, and that it's very similar to a woman going through perimenopause. So when you're, if your wife uh, is in her 40s and early 50s, she's going through perimenopause, and then you got a teenage girl. That's why things get so volatile because everybody's just a wreck. That's so, why I'm on the road. Oh, Tom, <laughs> in a hotel room watching HBO Max. The winning time with the Lakers. And that's probably why they will butt heads. Even though they love each other and they're, do, they're other. trying to do it, but there's they're both, that's not synced up. Right. And I yeah. bet you that your daughters love her so much more than life. Right. But they but that, that also gives them the, um, <laughs> th- they feel like, oh, mom's a safe place. I can go nutso on her she's gonna love me no matter what right so they would throw all this on me uh-huh. that's why i said they're sweet to everybody in public and then they hold it in and then they come and spew it out onto me right but i feel like i diffused things when their daddy would go you'll never watch television again and throw <laughs> you know when you're like that's not realistic it's- chuck or i'll take your phone and you'll never have a phone again and i'm like you can't follow through with that. <laughs> right, exactly. They've got to have a phone. You'll never drive again. Yeah, they will. <laughs> right. So he was always, he would go from A to D, like, you know, 100%. Yeah. And everybody would be crying, squalling, and slam the door. And I feel like I diffused. I think uh-huh. you just need to let them get through this. Right. And let them find your battles to fight. Mm-hmm. Now, if you find somebody smoking dope or dating somebody that ought to be in prison you know you need to take care of business right time to step in it's time to step in but and don't let them do whatever they want to do because you know they're still children and they need boundaries i don't understand i've never understood parents going um like giving kids alcohol underage or you know like i I want to be the cool people so let's provide the all that i've never done that i don't yeah. believe in that no they, they need own, a line they need to know that there's a, a boundary somewhere and you have to be the one that sets it yeah and there's right and wrong yeah so and when they're out with them. their yeah so when they're out with their friends at a bar uh, far away from you when they're deciding what to do there's a little voice in the back of their head yes. that's saying mom would not think this was cool yeah yeah it's like the same feeling when you hear an ambulance go by right <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. And they got that internal thing. Yeah. Yes, my darling. Yeah. But um, let me ask you this. Are you going through yeah. that horrible ACT prep? Or are they not making little children take those terrible exams to get into college anymore? Yeah, my one went through it and did all of it. This one doesn't have to do it. Oh, praise God, Yeah, Tom. it's so good. And she has different ideas of what she wants to do, so it makes sense and then the pandemic lined it up and knocked all those tests out so she's really kind of in this good place where she would do horrible on those tests she's not that kind of a kid she's yeah. not like she's not you know some kids can take those things so i'm really relieved that she doesn't have to go through just being beaten up by those things oh, you went through it yes yeah. with all three of them and yeah. one my middle one's a really good test taker right my boy um, and my youngest are not, mm-hmm. but made wonderful grades, and you know, and are smart, and yeah. got ingenuity, and all that. But you, and but they had to go by what those test scores were. Tough. 
and I'd hire people and it all goes <laughs> one of my best friends does that for people she sits up in her bed and takes ACT test and watches Real Housewives on Bravo and so <laughs> She, uh, people hire her and she's nut and, and, uh, and I'll say, Emily, do not say cuss words in front of my children. And she, I mean, she just lets them rip and she likes to get into their personal business and who's dating who. But, um, but anyway, she, she taught my kids and, and she said, oh, Lynn, it's like, it's not a scam, but she said, it's, it, there's ways to take this thing. Like if right. you're running out of time, just put C. And she taught <laughs> them all these, you know, street smarts kind of things. But yeah, yeah but they all, you know, had to have it to go into school. And yeah. I'm so thankful that they don't have to have that anymore because that's stupid. Yeah. You, I don't think you can, you can measure someone's success by a test they took when they were 16, 17. No. Well, in you, a room full of other people that they find attractive. You know, right. there's a lot of things. <laughs> right, there's a lot going on. And also, I think being comedians, I think we look at life in a different way, like what their path is going to be, because we're friends with so many people that they're all oddballs. Half of them are ADHD. <laughs> the other half are alcoholics. And they all found their way. They all yeah. kind of found, like water, just kind of find a way <laughs> and become grown-ups so it's yeah. not like it has to be in this set path yeah There's... i never thought oh you've got to be an accountant i've got friends right. that said oh you're going to be an accountant right exactly and these kids are miserable because that's not what they wanted to do yeah but i'm a dreamer right and i believe in dreaming and doing whatever i feel like god gives people gifts yeah and um and that's what you need to go with and right. what you enjoy doing. You got one life to live, yeah. you know? Yeah, And exactly. if you want to dig ditches, I don't care. I'll help you get a shovel. <laughs> right. But I believe in being happy and finding joy and doing things yeah. you enjoy doing. Right, exactly. And, of course, I've had a husband who had health insurance. I say all that. <laughs> and he, you know, floated me while yeah. I discovered, you know, what I could do in my dream. How, I mean, how was he during... As like, always was he... like whatever you want to do always uh-huh always yeah and i don't i think it you know he's very quiet and he doesn't like attention brought on him he's uh -huh. very private so i think there have been times where he's like you know kooky land i gotta deal with all that but he's always been like whatever you want to do that's great and then when this was happening yeah i don't think he understood what was happening and i tried to tell him mm -hmm. and my baby child had um left a college in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and decided that she wanted to go to school for makeup for television and film. Uh -huh. So we were moving her in in Brooklyn, and I had hired these young guys to do my social media. I never put money into my career, right. ever. Like I had two headshots that are, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I look like flock of seagulls. <laughs> right. I, and, and if I got any extra money and had gigs, I would buy school uniforms or get the kids haircuts or whatever that yeah. was kind of our deal is right. that my husband i would that would be our play money uh -huh. so i never <laughs> i never i was not a good business person and i never invested back into myself but yeah. i at the i thought i'm either going to quit and go to work at target or i'm gonna because i knew charlie was gonna have a baby and i thought i want to be with that baby or i'll i'm gonna for three to six months I'm just going to put the money into these social media boys, these young kids, yeah. and see if they can help me. And I was moving my baby into um, her apartment in Brooklyn, and I noticed they put out the video about me talking about taking Chuck to see Def Leppard and Journey and how everybody <laughs> looked old and had plantar fasciitis <laughs> in their feet. And um, and that started going viral. And right. I and I said, y'all, I think something's happening. Like, I could physically feel it. And everybody was uh -huh. like shut up the uber's here and we got to get these suitcases you know everybody was fighting and tense trying yeah. to get in through new york and we didn't know what we we're like a bunch of hillbillies <laughs> and um so it it took him i think he finally gets it now now like oh leanne's on a tour we <laughs> she's making some money yeah there's play money people pretty like good her. Yeah, yeah people like her that kooky thing um it's taken him a while to catch yeah. up and all of it yeah but, but that's I would, great though but that... i was going 
Like this is from heaven. Like <laughs> it's you happening. don't understand. It's really happening. I, and and even though I lived in Knoxville, I've always watched people like you. I've always wanted to be a cool kid at the cafeteria table. <laughs> and to me, that was Comedy Store and the yeah. Laugh Factory and all that. And um and in New York at the Comedy Cellar and all. So I always kept up with what was happening. Right. It felt like I had my finger on the pulse. Uh huh. Even though I was a mom, in Knoxville, Tennessee, you know, going yeah. to big sporting goods, buying equipment for <laughs> this one to play. What I, but I always felt like I had my finger on things. Yeah. I don't know what I was about to say. I don't uh, know. Um, but it's amazing that Chuck was, uh, it's almost, it's a blessing that he was kind of almost not absent with it, but that it didn't, he, he wasn't pushing it in either way telling you to stop or telling you to go harder just kind of being there that's a that's like the it's a very unique partner to have because if he could have destroyed it either way I know, (laughs) or made it more difficult Uh uh-huh or said you know maybe you ought to get a real job yeah i mean because in knoxville we had a comedy club right we don't we haven't had one in years but it was side splitters uh-huh. <laughs> it was right. also down at, in Florida, Bobby Jewell. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and before that, it was Hef, all those guys from North Carolina. But anyway. Does he think you're funny? I don't think he does. Interesting. I think I say that. Uh-huh. I think there's some things that make him, I'll see his teeth every once in a while. Because <laughs> he's very stoic and. And I think he thought that was funny. He and doesn't I, laugh a lot in general. He doesn't laugh a lot in general. And he's very he's got a good sense of humor. Yeah. And he'll br- come out with a zinger. It's not often. Uh-huh. But when he does, we're all, the kids and I hold on to it. And go, remember when Dan said. But um, uh, he's a Monty Python kind of uh-huh. guy. And I'm a... Um, I'm a Saturday Night Live, Will Ferrell right. kind of person. <laughs> yeah. So our sense of humors are different. Right. But um, he knows that that people must love me. <laughs> but, the, yeah, like, I don't let him come to shows very rarely. Really? Because I feel that. Mm-hmm. And I tell you what it is. I, I think I let him come to some in the early and he would he's very detailed uh-huh. and and type a and so i right. would be spinning a yarn and talking and doing and he would say it was not a tuesday it was a wednesday <laughs> and it was at four it wasn't at three and i'm like shut up you're ruining it my yarn it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean anything <laughs> it's a horrible detail so i so yeah. i i was very sensitive about yeah it. and it's just better i'm like here sell some t-shirts yeah. but he very rarely goes with me i just right. did the win in las vegas oh oh that's where i'm going on friday Friday. Isn't oh, that, I wish I could go with uh, you. Oh, it's the best. Isn't oh my it? gosh, so wonderful. It's so nice. And he loves to gamble. He likes to play a little blackjack. So uh, okay. um, he's still got a big job and he's got a lot on him. Right. But I, if there's somewhere fun that mm. I know he can play golf or do something, so yeah. he came to the win with me. <laughs> right. And um, and he, they, you know, they put you in that suite. Yeah. And you're out there looking at all that, and he, it's so nice. He filmed it and said, if you're worried about your mom don't be she's fine <laughs> yeah. but i normally don't yeah. get to stay in stuff like that you know you it's know. so funny that when you look down at the at everyone at the pool when you hear that beat like you're on the 30th floor or something and you can literally hear the music the music's too loud for me inside the thing i can't even imagine and you look down and it's just like bacteria it's just people are bacteria filling <laughs> doing the- lord knows what <laughs> You know, all, all uh, jammed into a pool. <laughs> little women with pot belly stomachs doing God knows what. You know, my b- baby played travel volleyball all uh, over the United States. My girls did. Which <laughs> you talking about a scam? Is tra- is um, yeah, any sport? Travel sports. Travel terrible. sports. Terrible. Terrible. If anybody out here needs to make a living, yeah, get some socks from Nike or something. Set them up in a convention center where people are playing sports <laughs> yeah. and they'll buy them and you'll make a million dollars but we were out going and doing and she was in the nationals we went to the in reno nevada okay. now think about who would have a child's anything in reno nevada <laughs> and we stayed in a hotel that gambling and people were like the at three o'clock in the afternoon like all the kids were had goggles on and were swimming and then at three o'clock that like this music started pumping oh God. and they took this big thing out and all these women were you know twerking and my can't you know we're trying to swim and a cigarette button go 
And then somebody was making out in the jacuzzi, and, <laughs> yeah. and my baby is the one that would stare at all that. Yeah. Loved, wanted to see middle-aged women drunk, making out with somebody. Like, she was like, is that slot machines I'm here? I mean, she loved all that. Yeah. My middle child would have been like, Mommy, I'm scared. Yeah. The baby was like, oh, my gosh, let me watch them make out. You know, she was 12. Here's my future. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, but, um, but yeah, that was pretty oh nifty God. getting to go to the win. Yeah. And that so gave nice. me some kind of street cred. I'll uh-huh. tell you what's given me street cred is I did an arena with Nate Borgazzi. Right. And then, and everybody was like, what? You're doing something with Nate. And I've known Nate for years and he's darling. Yeah. And, um, and then when I said, I'm going to Las Vegas, they were like, where? And I go to the win. And they're like, what? <laughs> Because years ago, I was on a tour with, I mean, like 20 years ago, with the Southern Fried Chicks. (laughs) And we were kind of the, we thought we were the... um, answer to the female version of blue blue collar yeah and our little man that that little crusty man that um booked us was one of those old school didn't take no for an answer Uh and put us in every nook and cranny Uh in north america is all this to it and 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 just worked all night and did and i think people go yeah we'll take them just so he'd hang up (laughs) and um he put us somewhere off the strip yeah. in Las Vegas, and I can't remember what it's mm-hmm. called, but I remember it had a daycare, and I remember <laughs> oh, no. that it was rough. <laughs> And I thought, woo, I'm in Vegas, but it's very different than now being at the yeah, win. So, yeah, I've done those too. You're kind of like off the beaten path. Yeah, and it's like where all the locals like to go gamble because the odds are good <laughs> in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, and you're like, I'm in Vegas, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> well, and he put us in Laughlin before we got there. Oh, you ever been to Laughlin? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That, this is like penny slots. Laughlin was, that was rough. I think that is the roughest. That's rough. I did a club there with, uh, do you remember John Joseph? Do you know John Joseph? No, I don't. He was a good comedian. I th- he's still banging around. He's a gr- great act, great guy. And he and I were opening, we were the opening weekend in Laughlin at like the Hilton of their new sh- showroom thing. And... It was so, it was 200 degrees. You couldn't go outside. You literally could not go Hell, outside. Uh-huh. And then the people that were there, just people that make bad decisions in life. <laughs> like, why are you coming to this place? And it was so, the shows were, we did like a weekend of shows. They were so bad after the first night that the next night I brought a yo-yo up on stage with me. And after a couple jokes just nothing no they didn't even know where they were <laughs> i just like you know what i'm not going to put myself through this so i'm going to do something that you will understand and i just started playing yo-yo <laughs> to get through the set oh, and my i just Lord. i just did 10 minutes of yo-yo and then said good night <laughs> did they like it I, I have no idea they were half dead they half were on dead. oxygen oxygen and carts and that That's was, exactly who was there with mine, and oh. I, we walked in, and Brenda, who Etta May, I don't know if you've ever heard of Etta May, yeah. she was in our trio. She plays a character like Larry the Cable Guy, and she said, uh-huh. "Is this just a series?" She said, "Is this an amputee convention?" <laughs> and it was people that had lost limbs, and it was and uh, a lot of oxygen and wheelchairs, and they rolled a woman up yeah. to the front of the stage, and I, I opened, I was the first one, yeah. and she had on a Lisa t-shirt from Bart Simpson, uh-huh. Lisa Simpson t-shirt, <laughs> and she was humped over and sound asleep the whole time, and I remember being asleep. in the, and thinking, I'm gonna quit, this is my last gig, I'm, I'm okay, I can go to work at Target, and I, there was a TV in the green room, and Carrie Underwood was, up against Bo, whatever that little thing's name was, in American Idol. Uh-huh. And I rem- that's how long ago it was. And I remember th- they kept me from losing it. I'd just watch American Idol while the other two went out on stage. Oh. But And a little old man came up to us. We used to sell CDs. And he, w- he came up to the table and said, you two are great. Her not so much. Talking about me. <laughs> and I thought, well, don't worry about it, mister, because I'm not coming back and I'm not doing it. And I remember the next week was going to oh. be Thunder from Down Under. And it was that Oh yeah. It was that Australian bunch that take their clothes off. And I just thought, my life is over. Yeah, what am I doing? What am I doing? Those places really make you question 
every decision you made in your life. Like if this is it, then I know I'm not, this isn't going to work. <laughs> I know. But that is why uh, Laughlin is pretty close to visiting hell. You're supposed to see that. Yeah. You're supposed to see that and understand that, that, that there, there, there are traps that you can fall into and you could end up doing a bunch of those around the country <laughs> <laughs> if you make the wrong decisions. I know, and most casinos, do you find, are darling. And Great. they treat you like Elvis. It feels like show business. Uh-huh. That, that, that backstage at the win. Oh, I just like sitting on the couch. I don't even have to do the show. Just let me sit here and feel like this is what show business is supposed to be. I There's know. fruit and crudite <laughs> and and you just, oh, it's a, a, a dream. And somebody escorts you down. They've got a Glock in their pocket, you know. <laughs> yeah. Taking you through you the done, kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever done Tulsa River? River Spirit in Tulsa, no. Oklahoma. You've got to. <laughs> and the sheriff that used to be the sheriff in that town. Yeah. Now has a farm and does this on the side. And he carries, <laughs> he's got a walker dog and he carries a gun and he walked me, don't not leave your room and walk me down. And little Karen Mills was opening for me and we've been traveling together since 2004 and we were going what the heck <laughs> and they walked us through these you know like jim gaffigan's on the wall earth yeah. went in fire fleetwood mac you're like what in the world uh, it's the and, best. He, and he goes just let me know if your family wants to come by here and, and you got a couple of nights you need somewhere to stay in between places sammy hangar hangs out at the pool all the time and i'm like <laughs> what oh uh, it's the best and chris rock was coming gabriel iglesias yeah and i was like oh my lord yeah. i should be mopping y'all should let me vacuum <laughs> Yeah. What am I doing here? But that's the funniest thing. They don't even have to be that nice to you. Like, they just have to be kind of respectful because you have been abused so long <laughs> <laughs> in show business doing all of these gigs that aren't even gigs that you're just, and no, and you, there's no food and there's no money and there's no hotel and you've just been abused. There's a dirty, the dirty so band aid in the back of the yeah. green room. And, <laughs> and then someone's like, welcome and you're like oh <laughs> did is... you feel that because that i'm yeah. glad you said that I because have, we all have right i almost right? feel guilty now yeah. like at the win i felt like i need to dust or if they, <laughs> right. there's something i don't even know you know when i went up to the desk yeah. i don't know if i'm supposed to be here i know i do this thing and it's purely ptsd from from all of those and just being respectful because you know how hard everyone else is working around you Whoever is the housekeeper in whatever hotel I'm in, they are, they must, I, I picture them walking in and like, what angel was in here? <laughs> because I clean everything. All the towels are in a, in a pile. All the garbage has been thrown out. <laughs> I just, because I feel like I'm not doing anything better than what you're, we're all just dealing with a Wednesday. We're all dealing with a day. Right. And if I can make your day a little bit easier, that's great. And hopefully it'll come back when I get to go to the next spot. But yeah, I, I am, I am. I can tell you've got a sweet spirit. And or I, and, and I do. Or spirit. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. I right. Mean, and I feel all the time like, what in the world yeah. am I doing here? And thank goodness. I mean, somebody wants to listen to me, Babylon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm so thankful. So thankful. But I also feel kind of like an imposter and that I mm -hmm. should be cleaning. <laughs> or, I mean, that I should be doing. When I go out and, and, and these audiences are so wonderful. Yeah. And I think I should vacuum out their car. Like I, <laughs> yeah. I should go home with them. Right. I could make them a meal. I feel that way. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I'm and i just so thankful to no, be. No, it's the best. And then I've had other people, that, like my concert promoters, and they're like, oh, we've had comedians that go, this should have happened to me a long time ago. And, <laughs> you know, F y'all for not getting to making it happen. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Right. <laughs> and I've, do, I've done this 22 years, but it has been up and down. And there's yeah. times I could not get arrested. Right. And then there were other times where it would be like, you got a Hollywood deal. And, you know, and I right. was naive and thought, oh, I really am going to be on TV. Right. This will be easy. Yeah. And it, <laughs> and it never worked out, you know. Yeah. Well, that's the great thing about about this now is that you don't need that, really. And you have all these fans now and millions of people watching you and showing up at the shows without doing a TV show. That's 
That's new and great. The t- we're pretty blessed that we have that timing now. That you just kind of do it on your own. I know. Right? Because, you know, everybody says to me, who's watching net, uh, network television? Mm-hmm. You know, growing up, that's what my idea of success was, yeah. was to have my own sitcom. Because I love Roseanne and Ray yeah. Romano and um, yeah. uh, Bill Cosby and all those shows, yeah, yeah. you know. And I, that that's what way. I thought that was what I wanted. Yeah. And now I think, I could I don't have the strength to do that. They say it's like 14 <laughs> hours a day. I'd have to get IVs. Then stop I mean, touring. And stop, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I know. Even though touring, and it is wonderful, but it's hard. I think at my age, like, you know, I'm... I, I go. I still fly everywhere, and I, you know, maybe yeah. I don't know. Someday I may have to get a bus, right? <laughs> so that I can sleep in the night, you know, know like know. I'm on a cruise ship. I just don't want. I just don't want to do the the driving in between the gigs, like the when you get the like. I love going everywhere, and then sometimes you're like, hey, there's a gig in Red Wing, Minnesota, and it's sold out, and they're very happy you're coming. And you're like, yeah, but I got to drive <laughs> two hours through the woods. <laughs> from the airport to get there i don't know if i want to do that anymore. i bet you've done everything <laughs> haven't you you've been everywhere and done everything yeah a lot a lot i was calling before the pandemic i was calling it the what are you doing here tour because every time i'd get off stage at some performing arts center they'd be like what are you doing here <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well you're here <laughs> I should have been asking you that question. <laughs> um, okay, so Tom, you got you started doing this. How old were you when you started this? Um, I was in my late twenties, like uh, mid mid twenties. Did 20s. you go to New York from New Jersey to do yeah, it? Yeah, I started in New York. Was my first place. Yeah, because I I went to school in New Jersey, grew up in New Jersey, went to school in New Jersey, and then came up and lived right outside of New York and uh, June 12th 1993 was my first spot at the New York Comedy Club I've been to the New York Comedy Club yeah this was the old one where this was the original one was on top of a country western bar and it was and I got the I called the, the village voice I called the number and went and did my first open mic at like it was still light out it was probably six in the afternoon and uh, and went upstairs from the country western bar, and there was the little club, and I went in there and uh, and did it, and it was me and Greg Giraldo were the only two comedians on the oh on my the bill. gosh, yeah. I loved him. Oh, he was yeah, he was. So great. I must have gone to the newer one that was a brick. Yeah. That was um, I think. Yeah, I think that was the second location. But see, I've never gotten to do a lot of that stuff. I've mm. done some of it, but yeah. I haven't done a lot of it. Yeah. And I've always wanted to, and see, I. I always think, oh, Jim Gaffigan, and you know, being fun. in New it York is, and yeah, doing all that. Just, that was the biggest advantage, where there were all these clubs, and you could just be around great people. So you got an idea of where you stacked up, and what to do and what not to do, and what made people really good. And that that New York was great for that, for sure. But you know, people like yourself that didn't come from that, you're just so you because. There was, it was just you, right? It's your 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 own path. Yeah, and I do think I've got a lot of friends that were in LA during that whole after Blue Collar blew up, that are from the South. And I think when you live in Los Angeles, maybe mm. or in New York, you you almost become a character of yourself, <laughs> right? You know, and you're <laughs> yeah. Before you know, it, you're saying things like "Jack my hair to Jesus," and you're like, "What does that mean? <laughs> we don't say that." So I think it kept me yeah, real right. being in Tennessee and Texas mm-hmm. and with a bunch of little kids, yeah, you know, I, yeah. I think it kept me because if I'd have been younger, I would have been worried about my thighs and I would have mm. been in L.A. trying to be pretty and I would have I would it would have gotten in my head yeah. and I would have been like, what do they want me to be that's and not the, who yeah, I am? That's the biggest curse. What do they whenever you have those moments of what do they want me to be? Yeah, that's that's the kiss of death. So now that you're. So you've gone on this journey now because you are right ahead of me. What do you, what's on your mind that you like to talk about on stage now that everybody's kind of out of the house? Um, I talk about that grandbaby a lot and I talk about the relationship with their daddy Uh now that it's just us. Uh Cause you know, there's a lot of, (laughs) it's hard Yeah. (laughs) when you, 
are empty nesters and mm-hmm. it's like who are you and what do you want from me i mean <laughs> you know he's always building a career and he's very you know overachiever and uh-huh. and wants everything to be perfect and then i was trying to do comedy and then um and that but we the kids were playing sports or whatever they were doing and yeah. we were so into everything that uh, that i tell young people now nurture that relationship with your husband and have a date night every week because yeah. They're, these kids are going to be gone, and I and people would tell me that, and I'd be like, and now it's just me and him, and and it, you know, <laughs> yeah. you got to have things to talk about and all that. So I talk about building intimacy with their daddy again, uh-huh. and how his idea of intimacy is so different from mine. You know, men are different. God made y'all different, and there's nothing wrong with that. I celebrate that. Love men. I've always loved men. Yeah. In this age where everybody's pissed at all the time at men, I love men. I've loved men since I was in kindergarten. And I love the way God made y'all. Yeah. And y'all are supposed to be the hunter and the gatherer. And you're supposed to, yeah. you know, see your wife in a gown and, you know, go nuts. I mean, that's right. just, you know. It's just hardwired. That's hardwired. Yeah. And I dig that. <laughs> right. I have a friend who... Uh, they <laughs> became empty nesters and he was so nervous going on date night with his wife that he wrote down talking points <laughs> of things that could get them through the dinner. <laughs> well, that's a good so, idea. He was so scared of like, what are we going to talk about? I know. Because you're not talking about when well, she's got a volleyball tournament in Colorado. So you be in Indianapolis right. while I got, you know. Yeah, it's that that business is now dissolved. Yeah, it was the two of you running this corporation and trying to figure. And so it's all logistics. It was all just like, okay, and what about her? And is she getting in the SATs and this and that? And and who's got to pick up who? And then it's that company's gone. Uh huh. (laughs) It is. So we talk about we sit and look at pictures of this baby. Yeah. And say, look at his calves. (laughs) Look at his mouth. Look at his teeth. We all kiss him in the teeth, and then we all catch every bung that comes around because he's in daycare. And so we don't care. We love him. We take that bullet because we love him. But we talk about the baby a lot. Uh-huh. And, and now, I mean, Chuck will just go, where are you this week? And, and half the time, he doesn't know where I am. Right. And he's like, he didn't even ask him where how'd it go. Right. Every once in a while, he does. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. I talk how is, about... You how know, was Boise? It was Phoenix. Okay. <laughs> And people say, oh, is your husband going to go with you? And I'm like, no, I cannot <laughs> yeah. take him. You know, God love him, but he would be expecting yeah. to do nasty things with me. <laughs> like at the wind, I was like, Chuck, this is a big deal. And I was trying to put on makeup and I had on one of their um, robes. I love it uh, when the there's robes. a robe in the room. <laughs> and that's very rare for me. But it's true. So I was, I had it down and um, I still have these breast implants and <laughs> he loves them. And I was playing a little michael jackson some old school getting hyped up i was you know because i it was i was nervous and torn sure. up over it and he has had been drinking and playing blackjack and he comes <laughs> in and starts doing that i'm like oh no i know what that look is because he's not a dancer <laughs> and um very introverted so i know when he's you know oh, i'm thinking oh no and i'm like don't touch me chuck i'm gonna sweat over my lamp i've got to get i've got to get these the, i've got glue on my eyelashes <laughs> Don't so if I was on the road with him, yeah, he would I would have to do horrible things <laughs> and be funny, and he would go, What is there to eat? I'd be on a bus cooking something, I don't have time for that. Uh, you know, my girls every once in a while will, will travel with me, and they're you know 26 and 24, and they're uh-huh. you know they've got new spray tan and highlights, and because we are from the south, and they'll be like, How do I look? And I mean, they're about to introduce me. <laughs> and I'm like, you look great. And then, and it's not about, it's, I'm practically, you know, in a gown because I, they've got, they stole my dress. So I just do whatever, I mean, <laughs> they want the, they, they really don't want attention, but they're yeah. like, how do I look? And so yeah. I, I don't take the family a lot. Yeah, that's smart. <laughs> and I also, I've worked with people before that have hired kids on the road and stuff. And I just uh-huh. don't think, um, yeah. I don't think it's good. When I, I see Jim on the, on the road and he's got all of his 12 children with him and he's kayaking and it's like and they're all getting in the bus and they're all coming on stage and introducing him and i'm like jim how do you how do you how do you do it but it's uh he's got he operates in a different he operates in it yeah. he's bound to because i've never yeah. seen anybody churn out 
yeah. material. I and know. you think, what tour is this? Yeah. You know, all new material. I see him post of and I'm I like, know. good Lord, I must be the biggest loser. <laughs> I, know. I met him one time and um, at a after CMA's after party uh-huh. and I didn't get invited to the CMAs. <laughs> Somebody just said, Lynn, come along and I right. snuck in. Mm-hmm. And he had been a presenter and I've always been a big fan of his. Yeah. And uh and I got to meet him and he I, he said, You did the dry bar comedy special, didn't you? I went, Yeah. <laughs> and he said, I know who you are. And I and I remember thinking, What? Because <laughs> you know I did this dry bar thing. Yeah. That was that was it, right? That was the one that really popped. Well that that helped, but that didn't pop. That didn't make me pop. Okay. It was when I really couldn't sell tickets. It wasn't a. It didn't translate into ticket sales. Okay. I think it got me a lot of fans, but I yeah. don't think they were people that went anywhere. Right. <laughs> and I remember, you know, I really and truly did that special thinking nobody's ever going to see it. My yeah. manager said to me, there's this thing out of Salt Lake City. The Mormons are doing it. <laughs> Nobody will ever see it. And I was like, okay. And he said, You've got your a luncheon in Dubuque that week. That's how good my yeah. career was going, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> that I was doing a luncheon in Dubuque, which nothing wrong with them. They're fun. Yeah. I mean, they all they do yeah. is drink. I mean, everybody's drunker and Cooter Brown at eleven o'clock in the. And I had a mimosa and right. then had to go sit on a toilet in a convention center because the room started spinning. But anyway, <laughs> then I flew down there and did that drum part and thinking that nobody would ever see it. Right. And um. I did a bunch of old material that I didn't have anywhere. Yeah, right. And I could barely remember. Smart. Yeah. And I don't and I look at it and I cringe. I think it was horrible. Uh, no. Oh, you angel. But I did that <laughs> about Maggie being mean at fourteen, fifteen, and that that went viral. Yeah. But it didn't I I couldn't sell tickets. Like I was at Orlando, right. Tampa. Uh-huh. I mean Orlando and Tampa improv and they were like, We love her. She can't sell tickets won't have her back she didn't get drunk and fight in the parking lot but we're not having her back right. and, I, and i just thought i really thought i'm gonna just so it was face, facebook it was um i hired those young guys oh, and they all those clips they got that stuff and you couldn't use dry bar you're not they own it oh. so i couldn't la- i couldn't use that oh. so they gathered up all the stuff i had over the years over 20 something years right. and started putting stuff out and right. i think the second video was the Def Leppard and Journey and right. something about, you know, everybody's gone to concerts and thinks, yeah. oh my Lord, everybody looks a hundred <laughs> yeah. and, you know, Fog Hat is on their last leg and uh, that resonated with people. Yeah, we're not and cool then I anymore. Think, yeah. And I think people saw that <laughs> right. and then it goes, what else has she done? We don't know her. Right. Right. So then, because, you know, most of my career, I've done like the same five clubs every year that would, that would have me. Yeah. But they were good clubs yeah. like Stardome, Zanies right. in Nashville, um, but in Austin Cap City Comedy Club, which right. is one of the best in the nation. They and so I had those, but I mainly to be able to stay home with three babies, I did corporate, private, right, any fundraisers, anything yeah. I could, yeah, to try to stay in it, yeah. And um, but it you know it wasn't glamorous. She right. But, but people what? didn't know who I was. Yeah. And I think now people go, oh, she must be one of those YouTubers. She's just starting doing comedy <laughs> out of the back of her van. And I go, no, I've been doing it 22 years. Right. Exactly. And I do kind of have a chip on my shoulder. I don't want people to think that. I've done yeah. this a long time. Yeah. Oh, who cares? As long as they know. I mean, because. That's what Greg Warren said. He goes, yeah. who cares? Yeah. Who cares that they know that? I mean, it's nice. I mean, the story is great and it's nice to hear it and stuff. But for people just to they don't realize like that's this is kind of how 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 out of touch and not and they shouldn't be they 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 don't know how it works you're so good and smooth and professional of course there's 20 years behind it of course and there's all of this material it's like you know for them to think that you just showed up oh that's just that's just them they'll figure it out <laughs> oh, Tom, thank you <laughs> or for not saying and, that. and who cares right because they're showing up and having a great time. They don't need to know what this is. I know, is. and I need to focus on that part. Yeah. You know, but I yeah. can't, in my head, I, I want to be one of the cool kids at the comedy store. Oh, or we're, the comedy store. Yeah. I do. I've always loved comedy. Yeah. And I've, um, I've watched all of y'all for years. And yeah. And I say all of y'all. Jim Gaffigan and... Um, yeah. 
Lori Kilmartin yeah. came up or went to San Antonio and I opened for her uh-huh. and we sat in the back and, and I remember her saying, you've gotten to have three babies and you, of course she was, you know, headlining and huge yeah. and writing for Conan or whoever. And, yeah. and, um, she goes, I want a baby. And this is before she had that little baby. Yeah. And, um, and I, and I thought, you know, for women, it is so hard in this business and I am lucky that I got yeah. to have my family. Yeah. And then now they don't need me and I can be gone and, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's perfect. Even it's though I love really... to go home and get a big Costco run in. Yeah. And I like to take it to their all their refrigerators <laughs> and to make sure everybody's got stuff. That is my, if what's I take the, my money, that's what I want to do. What's on that list? What do they get? Um, I love for everybody to have salad mixes for the week. And I like to get everybody their meat for the week their chicken (laughs) breasts i like them to have organic i don't want this grandbaby to eat chemicals (laughs) right i fed mine chemicals we didn't know any better tons of it tons of chemicals (laughs) process everything oh horrible so i made i made sure that they have they're stocked with you know good antioxidant (laughs) berries i get all those kind of things and i do there are some brands now that yeah that have like grass-fed beef in it but it's something you can fix yeah you know because they're all working and you know yeah. out of their minds and so i try to have stuff like that but also cook when i go home and they all come say, to my house and they do that's mm-hmm. good yeah. if it's just chuck and you do you do you cook not much yeah um, you need more people i need more people yeah <laughs> they, we're bad about opening a salad mix you know yeah. and, and putting a protein with it or whatever yeah. but i'm 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 used to cooking you know yeah. several vegetables a bread yeah like growing up if we didn't have a cornbread or a biscuit or or um, a French loaf, <laughs> yeah. something. It felt it didn't feel right. It doesn't to me. feel right exactly. And then I would go to a Weight Watchers meeting, and they would go, "You got to get that out of your head. Like you don't have to have that." And every, but that's what no, we did no, all my it's life. It's so worth it. I cook on. Uh, I'll come home, take that six a.m. flight on Sunday back after getting into the hotel at midnight, and people think like, "What are you insane?" But I love landing saying hi to the family, going to the store, getting all the food, and who's coming over? Who who are we adding? Who are we adding to? Because it's, the numbers are dwindling, right? So now it's like, sometimes it's just the two of us, and it's like, who else is coming? Well, we have a nephew that's here, and we have a niece that's coming by, and and cooking for them for the rest of that Sunday, that is That's your the best. thing? Oh, that yeah. is my thing, too. Yeah, it's the best. All right, where's the 20-year-old? 20-year-old is in school back east. Where? Is yeah. She, is well, she... I don't say publicly, oh, but, okay. but I'll tell you off air. Okay. But she's, uh, yeah, she's back. She's, she's near family back there. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, if she's near me, you know, I'll fry her a chicken and she can <laughs> sleep in a bed. <laughs> yeah. She's not that close. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, oh, but how but I will, But I'll take you up on that. Okay. When I'm rolling through town. Okay. Where do you go, Zanies? Um, I was just at the City Winery in Nashville. Oh, I like yeah. that place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Louis Anderson used to come there. I was a big fan of Louis. Oh, yeah. I got to work with him one time. Oh, he's the best. Loved him. He was so great. Oh. Louis Anderson, I had him on my radio show. And he, I, you know, I've just been a fan of his forever. And he was so sweet and so nice. We had met before, but he came after some time. We hadn't seen each other. And he came on the radio show. He's like... I've been watching you, Tom. <laughs> we do similar talking about your family, and I mean, I know what you're doing. We're different enough where we could be friends, but I, we're very similar <laughs> talking about the same things. It was such a compliment that he was even even knew what I was up to. Oh, oh, he was so great, so sweet, so sweet. I met him after Baskets had come out, and I was oh, a huge yeah. Baskets fan. Yeah, and I loved him and Martha. Yeah, that played Martha. Oh. She and I came up together in Cap City oh. in Austin, and she was oh. hilarious. So funny, so, so dry. funny, oh. so funny. So Our, what's so if Nashville is the time. What what's the what's the gig that I can possibly meet chuck you need to come to the bg or the tennessee theater okay. in knoxville and work those uh, okay. beautiful theaters tennessee theater is probably about 1500 seats okay is about 700 okay and um and then we also have the knoxville civic auditorium too if okay. you needed like big time that, right. i think that's where jim comes and nate bargatze right right been coming but theo just did 
Tyler uh, just did Tennessee Theater. Tyler Tomlinson's doing it. Right. Um, we get a lot of comedy come through there. All right, good. Dennis Miller um, shot a special at the Bijou right. one time. Well, I will only accept the gig if I can clear it with you first that you will be I've got to be there, there, Tom. And you can stay with me. I know people say that to you all the time. You don't have to if you like your hotel room <laughs> and like to clean it. But we can cook and do. I right honestly, um, I, I say no to everybody, but I would say yes to that invite for sure. I don't know what it is. I have the same thing that you have where I feel like we have been uh, friends much, much longer than we have. <laughs> oh, my darling. Yeah. Doll. Yeah. Thank you, honey. Enjoy the bread in your hotel room. I will. Yeah. And give me a report. I want to know because okay. you know these things. Okay. And I want to really, re- review. I will. I will. And thank you for letting me put part of the cool kids. I mean, I, you yeah, are I feel cool that kid. way. I you feel are that a way. cool kid. You, Angel, when you asked me this, I thought, oh my God. <laughs> I really. I tell my kid, they go, what are you doing out here? And I go, I'm going to get to be with John Papa. <laughs> yeah. You are my favorite. Oh, thank you, my you're Angel. You're the best. We've got it, Aaron. All right, everybody, that is it. That was the big conversation with Leanne. I told you you would love her. You would love her. And I have to say, I genuinely want to uh, visit her at her home. I want to meet her family. Don't you want to meet her family? (laughs) I just know that a cooked meal with Leanne is just uh, one of those stops on the road I will make happen during uh, during my tour at some point. She's so funny. Check her out everywhere. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, she's got specials. Go to leannemorgan.com and uh, that'll bring you to everything that she does. Thank you, Leanne, for being on the show. Thank you to Trade Coffee and Policy Genius and thank all of you for listening once again. I hope uh, you enjoyed this one and uh, keep spreading the word. Keep liking and subscribing, as the kids say. And we want more people to come to the table every week. You guys are the best. Until next time. Enjoy your day.